Hi, I'm Justin from workmanagement.tools and in this video I'm going to show you how to have a task in ClickUp updated when a client fills in a form. So for example, there might be a uh, profile form or some questions that you need to ask the, que the client uh, when you start new work with them. And we want those answers that they put into the form to go into that task. So that could be an external form like a Google form, um, Jot form, any, any external form provider, or it could be a ClickUp form as well. So in this case, actually external forms are a little bit simpler. Um, so I'll show the ClickUp version um, just so it's all on one platform um, and it's a little bit more complex. So to make this happen, we need something to connect all their platforms together. Um, if we have multiple platforms, Dropform, etc., we need to connect it with ClickUp and we also need something to run the actions. Um, ClickUp has internal automation, but it's a little bit limited. Um, we want to be able to do some extra things here. Um, in particular, ClickUp automation can only take actions on the same task that triggered it or it can create a new task. So obviously to update something, we're gonna need something a little bit more powerful. So I'm gonna use make.com, it's my preferred automation platform. Um, it just has the most unlimited potential. I can build basically anything with it. And if you're gonna learn a platform, I would suggest learning Make. So I'm gonna take you straight into the guts of this today, assuming you already know how to use Make. If that's not the case, don't worry. I have an automation course. So it's designed to take you from zero to the point where you can build most of the automations that any business would need. Um, and do that in only a couple of hours. So the link for that is down in the video description. Um, you can also get it at workmanagement.tools forward slash make. Uh, and I'll put any uh, current promos in that video description as well. So have a look at that if it's useful to you. Otherwise, let's jump into it. Okay, so first let's have a look at what we've got set up in ClickUp. So here I have a list with clients in it. They have a email there as well. Now, if we're using a ClickUp form, what ClickUp forms can't do is they can't um, direct that information that's being filled in into an existing task. They have to make a new task. So what we've got is a backend space where I've just got a new fresh list called form responses. And this is where we'll create the form. So we'll create a new form. Cool. So we've got a form here. We've got a link to that form. Okay. Let's try submitting this with one of our example emails just so we can have some information in the system that we can work with uh, once we jump into make. Great. Submit. Okay. So what happens in ClickUp? is in this backend list, we now have a new task. Okay, and that task will have all the information that we asked on it. Um, if you do need to show the other information, you go to the plus button here and show any custom fields. Cool. Now, this is not where we want this information. In fact, almost no one will have access to this list. No one will be able to see it. And um, we'll probably make it private. So we want that information to be on our actual client task. And we need to make a decision on where we want it. Do we want it to just be in the description? That could be good in some cases, or do we want it to be in custom fields? So most of the time, eh, actually maybe 50-50, um, but at least some of the time we're gonna, we're gonna want it in custom fields because we can filter on custom fields and, and do other things. So here I'm gonna add a new custom field uh, and I'm gonna go with a text field. Let's go long text, just in case people type in a lot. And we'll call it um, desired outcome. So that's where I want the answer to that question to go. Great, now let's set up the automation to do that. So we'll jump into make, and we need to watch for new tasks. So we'll go to our ClickUp modules, and we'll watch tasks. Here we wanna use the instant one, so that as soon as it happens, uh, the automation will find out about it. So that requires a webhook, that's fine. We'll hit the add button. We'll give it a really descriptive name, and this is really important because it's, once you have lots of webhooks, they can get really messy. So descriptive name. So we'll say um, form response list new tasks. We'll say in back end space, just so it's really, really clear. Great, we've got our connection to ClickUp and then we'll choose exactly where we're pulling this from. And the event that we care about is task created. Cool, so we'll hit save and that will create a connection that will immediately let uh, make.com know when a new task has been created in that list. Perfect. Now, with this watch task module, it doesn't actually give us very much information. So what we need now is to get the information from that task. So we'll use the get a task module and just pull in that task ID. Now this is where we run into problems because ClickUp actually doesn't have a search module. We can't search for a task. So there's a couple of different ways of doing this. Uh, I'm actually gonna show you one that is not my favorite, because um, my favorite requires a little bit more um, thought. So what I love to do is to, instead of sharing this link to the form, 
What I like to do is to have a field in here. Uh, often I'll use a text field and call it task ID. Then I will hide that field so that people don't actually see it on the form. So we'll go to the three dots here and then uh, hide. Now what you can do when you copy this link, uh, I'll just show you my URL bar here. You'll see that it has this XXX. So you can replace that with the task ID of the client task. Now you wouldn't want to do that manually. Um, so usually what will happen is when you send the clients the link to that form, it'll be in some sort of automated email. And so the automated email can pull in the task ID for this task and then kind of merge it into this URL so that the actual client gets a link that when they open it, they don't have to fill out the task ID, but the task ID will be filled out for them basically. And so what we end up with is a really, really clean, clear way of getting the task ID into here. So that's my preference. Uh, in this case, I'm not building a, a big enough example that I can kind of work that in. Uh, it really does require having some sort of automated way of generating those links. So for now, I'm gonna do a slightly simpler way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna list all the tasks in the client's list. So here we'll go select, and we'll select that client's list task. Uh, we don't want to include archived subtasks or closed. We'll have no limit as to how many it can return. Okay, so now I've got one bundle coming through and now we're gonna have lots of bundles because there are lots of tasks in that um, client list. So we want to then edit one of them with custom fields, but we don't wanna edit each one. If we have 50 bundles coming through, we don't wanna be running this 50 times. So we need to have a filter on here. And we wanna say only the client's task. So what we want is that the email that was entered in the form, which is now on this task here, that needs to match the email in the client list task. So first of all, in our getter task module, we'll go into custom fields and we'll find the email there. Okay, that needs to be equal to, and this is text, that needs to be equal to the email on the uh, clients list. So the email from this module needs to match the email from that module in order for this to continue. Okay, so out of all the tasks it could pull in, it's only gonna advance with the one that matches and the one that matches will update that one. So I'll show you those all running in just a second. So let's, let's set this up. We'll select our task ID, we'll map that from the list all tasks module. So the one that kind of made it through the filter. We don't want to change the task name. All we really want is to put in that last question. The what are your desired outcomes? Because we already have the email, we're matching that. So we'll go down to custom fields, desired outcome, and we'll map that in from our get a task module. So here, actually that came in as the description. So we'll map the description of that one to the desired outcome uh, custom field on the client's list. And that's it. Okay, so let's try running that. Okay, and it's now waiting for a new task to come in. So now let's watch that go through. Cool. So it saw that there was a new task created. It got the information of that task. Then it listed all the tasks in the client uh, list. So in this case, there were three. So it's three bundles. Of those three bundles, let's have a look here. Two of them didn't make it through the filter because they didn't match the email that was being submitted in the form. Whereas one of them did match the email in the form. So it went ahead and then on that particular one, we edited the fields. So if we now jump into ClickUp and we open this task, we'll see that has the desired outcome has been entered there. Now, with just one question, that doesn't look too impressive, but if you had say 50 questions, that starts to be a lot of work that you don't have to do manually. Um, and so it's a really good way of doing that. Now we will just have these tasks kind of build up in the back end in the form response list. Um, you could create an automation there to delete them after a certain period of time. A great way of doing that would be to set a due date using our automation. So here we'll edit the tasks and we can set the due date to be say today plus a certain amount of time. 
So let's go um, add days to now and we'll add say 30 days. And then in ClickUp, you could go uh, on this particular list, automate, and you could use make to do this as well, but I try and use ClickUp when I can, just because I can't use it that much. So when the due date arrives, then we'll delete this task. Or you could archive it if you want, but I'll go delete. So in 30 days, uh, it will be deleted. So that way I'll kind of keep this list a bit more manageable. Okay, and that is the automation to add the form responses from a client to a task. Now, if you were using an external uh, form, what you'd do is just replace these two modules here uh, with the external one. So you might watch form responses on Google Forms or JotForm or whatever, um, and then do the same thing to find the correct task and then update it. Okay, one extra piece I wanna add here is what if we're using uh, multiple choice options? So either dropdowns, labels, um, selecting one or multiple values. So if we go into click up here, on our onboarding questions, let's add a question with a labels custom field. So a label field allows you to select options and more than one at a time if you wish. Okay, so we'll go into editing and then we'll put in this call times question. Okay, now if we go into viewing here, we can fill in this form and we hit submit there. Now we'll have a look at the task that I created and we'll copy the ID of that so we can pull it through with that extra information. So here we'll run our get task module and we'll see how that data comes through. Okay, so under our custom fields, we have call time preferences and we have these strange big values. So what that's doing is each value in that label custom field actually has a unique identifier and that's what it's sending through uh, rather than the actual kind of text that we've entered. So that's actually really helpful because when we go to edit our tasks, that's what we're gonna need. So if we go into our edit a task module, you can see we can permanently select one or the other, but actually we need to just map these. So what we'll do is we'll map in our custom fields from our call time, uh, from our get task uh, module. So we'll just grab that whole call time preferences array. So we'll run that and then we'll enter in a new value. I've added a new client here and we'll select multiple values for this labels field. Okay, so let's see how that goes. Okay, perfect. So if we jump into our clients list for Fred Smith, we'll see that those two values have come through. Okay, so that works really well because in ClickUp, it's the same custom field. So this call time preferences is, I'm using the same custom field that exists on that form. Uh, if you were to use a different custom field, that would be a problem. Uh, but because it's the same custom field, it already knows what those kind of unique uh, values are, those really long strings. These ones here. Now, if for example, you're using a Google form, it wouldn't know that. So let's try that out. So let's delete these two. And let's instead trigger it off of the Google form. Great, so I've got my Google connection already created here. And I'll select my spreadsheet. Now this is a polling trigger, so it'll go off every, I might actually make it an hour uh, because I probably won't need this immediately after the client submits it. I can give it a little bit of time. So we'll select our sheet here and I'm not gonna have, uh, I'll make the limit really high up to 20. I probably won't have 20 clients submitting this all at once. So now I have those responses coming in from Google Forms. Uh, what I need though, is to be able to put those values in in a way that makes sense. So here we'll update any values we need to in particular, we need the desired outcome to be from our Google form. Let's test this to see how our call time preferences are being recorded in our Google form. So let's run this module only to see how that comes through. Okay, so our call times are comma divided uh, and it's text. So now we need to change that into those values. Now we don't know what those values are right now, so we need to get them first. So we'll use a ClickUp module called list all accessible custom fields. And we'll use this on just a particular list. And we'll have no limit. Now we'll run that once, just so we can get those values. So here we'll have one bundle per custom field. So we just need to find the one that we want. There's desired outcomes, there's email. And finally we have call time preferences. Now in the type config here, we have a drop down all the different options. We have options one, two, and three, along with their text and values. So I'm just gonna copy those into a, a doc for now so that I can use them in a second. 
Now, when we come to our call time preferences, we have morning, afternoon, and evening, and we can tick them. But actually, we want to map it in from our Google form. So we'll hit the map. And now we need it in an array. And not only does it need to be an array, but it needs to be converted to those unique IDs that ClickUp will understand. So what we'll do is we'll add an extra option here called set variable. And this is just kind of an intermediate step. It's going to do some processing for us. So we have that array ready. Now in here, we'll give it a name. And then what we'll do is we will bring in our value, which is from our Google form. And then we'll use a split function. So split, what it will do is we'll look for something. And in our case, we're going to look for a comma and then space. And we do have to use this keyword here. We can't just put it in. And it will output uh, multiple values in an array uh, before and after each instance of what it's splitting by. So it'll give us morning, afternoon, and evening. But we also want these to not just be the individual words. We want to convert them to the unique IDs that ClickUp will understand. So before we split it, what we're actually going to do as well is we use a replace function. So replace will look inside of a string and replace the word. So here we'll look at that string, which is going to say morning, afternoon, evening, or some combination thereof. And we'll look for morning. And then we'll have it replaced with the value that we want to put in. Now that's replaced for morning. Now we need to take the output of all of that and run a second replace that we'll look for afternoon. And so same thing here, colon, afternoon, colon, and then our value. And finally, we'll put in that brackets. And then outside of all of that, we'll again replace for evening. Okay, so first of all, those three values are going to be replaced, and then they'll be split up into an array. Perfect. Let's try that out just to make sure it's working the way we expect. So we'll put in, say, morning, comma, space, afternoon. And we get an array of those two values. Perfect. And now we can use that value as our call time preference. And we'll just put in the whole array. Okay. Now we've got this filter here, which is now in the wrong place. We really want it to be over here. So what we'll do is we'll just copy all of that and put it over here. And then we can delete this one. Okay. And now we'll run that again. And we'll see that it's worked out. And so it's output the custom field of those two call times. Let's just remember what we put in it was afternoon and evening. So in ClickUp, we should have this changing to afternoon and evening. There we go. Perfect. And so if you do have multiple choice options, that's how you do it to update an existing task in ClickUp. If you're having trouble with any of that or would like me to build your automations for you, reach out to me at make at workmanagement.tools and we can see if we're a good fit for each other. Otherwise, if you'd like to do it yourself, grab the automation course in the video description. It'll get you off to a flying start in no time flat and give you the skills to adjust this automation as you need or to create your own automations from scratch based on whatever your business needs. Powerful, flexible automation can change your work and business. All right, that's all from me. Be well.